driving the 2013 Ford Police Interceptor. I was really excited to learn all the functionalities and use all these buttons. And when Anatoly showed up and told me that this is actually an incredibly simplified version of what cops used to use, I was blown away. It looks a lot simpler than the inside of a typical patrol car. I mean, just the fact that you're able to sit in the passenger seat makes it uh, much more streamlined than the majority of patrol cars out there. Um, so if, uh, if you look at, for example, what we have here on the center console, you can actually see there's plenty of room in the center console here. There's not much going on here. There's two working cup holders, which is pretty exciting. These right here, those are the wailing sirens. So we're going to wake up a few people now. So we've got several sirens, for example. Each of them makes different sounds, some are sustained, some are staccato. Each one represents something different. What we've done, recognizing this, is uh, actually to redesign how the center console should work. We've combined the operation of the radio, the lights, the siren, even the gun locks for, for the weapons in the back into one very intuitive control system, into what we call our 09 control head. So this technology is huge for the police department, for the public at large, because it simplifies everything that police have to do when they're in the most stressful and most dangerous of situations. So show me how to get my gun. So that's the other thing, <laughs> right? Uh, you, you also have these, uh, these two big guns uh, over in the center. We've got the capability to operate the gun locks from back here. So the gun locks are electromechanical. All I have to do is, in whatever emergency I have, press this button. That opens the gun lock, nice. and then I can remove the shotgun are or the AR-15. Oh, yes, yeah. they are the correct way. Nice. So the whole idea behind this is that it's all integrated with the rest of uh, the rest of the system. If you, as the officer, just had to pull out your shotgun, something pretty heavy is going on. You're going to want your supervisor. You're going to want dispatcher. You're, you're going to want everybody to know that hey, you know, you're in danger, and uh, simply by opening this gun lock that can send a signal to the dispatch center that, uh, you know, Officer Jesse has removed her shotgun for whatever reason. They know that if you've taken out your rifle, you need help, and they're sending it. How cool and sophisticated a system is that? Now we've got a ton of cameras going on here. Where are they located? There are actually seven cameras uh, in this car. There are three video cameras, of which two are up here, one for the dashboard and one for field sobriety tests and then one is in the back and it points at the back seat and that monitors the suspect. You've got cameras everywhere, you've got seven in your car, you have a, a full screen image of your back seat or whatever you choose to put on that image. The other four cameras are for ALPR. ALPR. ALPR is automatic license plate recognition and those cameras are mounted on, on the roof near the light bar and all they do all day is, uh, is read license plates and just automatically read license plates so the officer doesn't have to do that at all. But if we were to pass, a, let's say, a stolen car with this plate number, then uh, the system will alert the officer. It'll it automatically do a search on, uh, on the database as to what was going on with that car. And if the officer decides to pursue, it'll alert the dispatcher, not just to the fact that the officer is in pursuit, but also to what exactly it is that they're in pursuit of. Wow, that's crazy. So it's pretty hard to steal a car and get away with it. Yeah, I, I wouldn't try. <laughs> so after learning all the controls, I was really eager to get in the driver's seat. Who gets to drive in the front seat of a cop car? As we're driving, it's great because we've got this ominous presence and I can feel it and I'm developing this alter ego in this car and traffic is just moving away, parting like the sea. <laughs> So it was so much fun driving on public roads with this cop car, but as I was approaching the Evox Center, I kind of felt like I didn't fully look the part. So as we pull up to the Evox Center, there's this huge group of police officers standing outside and they're all very curious about the car. Because my car was sicker than their cars, because we've got all this Motorola technology that hasn't yet been implemented throughout these police stations. Then we head out to the course. And the first place we go is the urban landscape. So it's got a school zone, it's got uneven pavement, it mimics public roads, broken pavement, lots of different city driving situations that you might encounter. 
you're going to get to do crazy, crazy stuff and, you know, almost destroy your car and yourself in a school zone. Then we move to this rural landscape that has a train track with a train. It's got, you know, dinging and bells and flashing lights and all. And um, I took the Ford Interceptor over that train track at a much faster than recommended speed. It was incredibly irregular, but the suspension really soaked it up. I was really impressed. I actually did it another 10 to 12 times, in fact. After the train tracks, it was on to this whoop section, and these were really dramatic whoops. And that was my roller coaster fun of the day. Our last stop for the day was the one I was most excited about. It was the skid pad. So they begin using these massive hoses. They're filling up this huge pad with water and they keep on pumping, keep on pumping. All of a sudden I realize we've got a couple inches of standing water here. So I say to the officer, so this is more like a hydroplaning exercise, I guess, right? And he says, no, 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 that's black ice. And he says that uh, my inclination, everyone's inclination, is to lay on the throttle. That will make you absolutely stationary. You're not going to be able to go anywhere. You're going to need to use different functionalities, ones you wouldn't expect to actually get this car mobile in this environment. <laughs> this is cool. Oh, oh I'm it up. <laughs> Cool. It's not quite as slippery as black ice. I grew up in the northeast and black ice is no joke. This is just cool and fun. And I've got these little places where I can sort of get a little bit of traction and throw it around the way I want to. Now it's not like real donuts or drifting or anything, but it's actually really cool. It's, it's a different kind of car control because I'm compensating for this crazy river <laughs> through which I'm driving. So I basically stayed out on the skid pad, ripping around and maneuvering and learning every minute for as long as I could, which was until the police officers actually came and got me and told me that I was 45 minutes past our time limit. <laughs> so they kindly kicked me out. Obviously none of us ever want to see those, you know, hear those sirens or see those lights in our rearview mirrors, but at the same time we all know that these people put their lives on the line for us each day. But to boot, they're dealing in their car with instruments you can't even imagine. And the complexity of those functions and the behaviors that they need to execute simultaneously, it's really remarkable. And they are owed a ton of gratitude and a great deal of respect.